Okay, next project here is setting up our panels for our greens to grow. Now we had almost a half an acre of them up here and the deer have mowed them down. So what we've got to do is we've got to come up with an alternative plan because remember 2023 is a year of solutions. So our solution is we had two of these uh, 10 by 10 uh, dog pens that uh, are six feet high. So what we're going to do is we're going to put those two 10 by 10 dog pens together. And what that will do is give us a 10 by 30. And we're going to purchase one more of them, which will give us a 10 by 50. Because the plan is we're going to plant all of our greens in them. And then we're going to put cattle panels over the top of them. And that way, maybe nothing will jump over in the top to get down into our greens. And then once the greens are done this spring... Our goal is to plant the English peas on the cattle panel trellises inside it. It looks like that's going to be the only way we're going to be able to keep the deer out of everything here um, at this point. Because there's absolutely nothing for them to eat right now. Now my ryegrass is coming up in the fields and in the food plots and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully when all this green ryegrass gets up around here really deep and lush, they'll have enough to eat. They won't come to the garden. But deer are browsers, so they don't really, they're not like a cow. They don't just stay in a field in one section and just stay there and eat. They love a, an assortment of different varieties of foods and stuff like that. So they just kind of, they're like a goat. They just walk along through the woods, just eating a little here, eating a little there, eating a little here. And there's nothing that says they won't come up here and just try to eat some of my garden. And they could be 10 acres of ryegrass out there that's luscious and green. And they'll still come to this garden. So we're going to take whatever precautions we can. Uh, we pray about our stuff, you know, I mean, but prayer is great, but you got to put foot to the ground. You know, I mean, God expects you to make provisions. He don't expect you to just say, well, Lord, I want you to protect this and then walk off and forget about it. He expects you to, <laughs> to actually put your feet to the ground and make it happen. So that's what these uh, dog pen things are. And guys, we get it all done. Hopefully it's going to look, look good and it's going to function even better than it looks. Okay, now that we're about wore out, I'm putting up a dog fence and driving T posts at the sections of it there. We've got a 10 by 30 ready here. We're going to go in here and I'm probably going to do uh, three or four different kinds of greens in this. I've got some uh, giant red mustard greens here from uh, Survival Seeds. I've got uh, our own broadleaf mustard that we save from year to year. I've got some uh, purple top turnips here. And then I have... Um, Siberian kale here that I picked up I think I picked that up in town it's the only place I found any we even looked online couldn't find none uh, by the large pack that is so I think I'm going to mix all these to, uh, maybe not mix them together but kind of do them in little sections down through there and then I forgot to mention here I actually have a big pack of American purple top rutabagas and I'm going to put them down here where we don't actually have the other dog pen yet bought and put up i'm gonna go ahead and stick them there i have plenty of them that way if it, they come up before we get the dog pen up and something eats them off we haven't lost all of our good greens so even though the tops are edible it's not our best so 
we fix and get a bit busy and plant. All right, well, these are in 10 foot sections here, so we're going to do 10 foot for each section that we do in here. That'll be my line right across here. Planting the purple top turnips right down here. They're a little bit thick, but uh, that's okay because we're going to thin them out to eat. That is, if they all do good, and which I anticipate they will. All right, the next section, the 10 foot section we're going to do here, we're going to do it in the Siberian kale. That's the best kale we found for the deep south where we live at here. Uh, we had the best luck with it. We tried a lot of different other ones and they just didn't do good. Okay, we got our red mustard greens in there. These are the giant reds. And he's not just a few in this pack. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sprinkle them all in the whole pack before I put these others out. Okay, now that's empty. That to Ms. Wanda. These are our regular mustard greens. Now these are, what are these called? American Purple Top Rutabagas. We kept them down this way because we don't want them to get close to the Purple Top turnips because they could be confusing a little bit when they first come up. There's a few rocks in this soil. I hear that. Didn't know there was any over here anymore. We are now through planting all of our greens. Uh, you know, we've shown the dog pen uh, scenario before, and it has really worked out well for us. The musakis literally growed in there. The deer ate off all the vines on the fences all the way around it. They never jumped in it. Uh, now the deer fencing up yonder is a foot higher than that, and they jump in it all the time. But this has a fence. There must be a depth of profession, uh, you know, thing for them, so that they don't, uh, they can't see well. Maybe on that other side, I don't know what the deal is, but 
they never jumped in that six foot fence like that. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna add another one on like we talked about. It's about $300 to add one of them on. And this is a couple of years of, of purchasing. Uh, this will be another year of purchasing and we're probably going to eventually if we can afford it to purchase one more to do four more panels coming up the hill here to try to reach this raised bed up here and we're going to try to eventually the whole garden area here we're going to try to eventually fortify it with this all the way around it that way maybe we can keep out any deer or anything like that that's trying to come in, rabbits, anything like that, you know, it's trying to come in here and get anything out of our garden. I feel like that if we put this around our whole garden area here, that eventually we'll be able to have a fortified garden area. Now we do have the high tunnel that we're gonna be using, but we just can't grow enough sweet potatoes in the high tunnel to feed me and Wanda for a year. I mean, we eat a lot of sweet potatoes. We eat them every day of our life. And this little whole section out here probably plus once the english peas comes out here this year we probably will put the sweet potatoes in there also with this whole area right here is probably not quite a quarter of an acre i believe that we can get enough in that to help us to have enough sweet potatoes to do it you know do us for a whole year now that's eating fresh canning you know maybe giving a few to the family whatever but um that is our goal in this particular garden here at Pecan Grove. When we go to put these panels on around the garden area here. We're just going to do them one panel. We won't have the two like this. But what we will be doing is putting a rod on the outside of it, going on up another four foot, and buying the insulators to put electric fencing around the very top of the outside perimeters of this whole garden. And hopefully that will you know, prevent any animals from ever wanting to come in here over the top. But now don't let that discourage you if you can't buy these panels and put them up and stuff like that. Guys, we have grown, matter of fact, in the front of our uh, property up here by the well, we have containers up there of uh, Siberian kale right now. We have containers of cabbages. Uh, we have containers with carrots in them. Uh, we have containers growing our onions to transplant, stuff like that. Um, don't let, don't be discouraged if you can't do it the way we do it, because you can do it in containers. Now these are mineral tubs and landscape pots that trees came in. You can do it in them just as easy as you can do it here. If you don't have a deer problem or some other kind of animal problem, you can do it in those containers and be just as successful in a smaller scale than what was what we're doing here. So don't get down if you can't do it the way we're doing it. There is other ways, and containers do work. Thank you, guys.